Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please take your seats. The session will begin momentarily. Ladies and gentlemen from all state, please welcome to the stage Elisa and Janie. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining our session. My name is Alyssa Pinkos. And I'm Janie Nayak, and we're both business analytics consultants at Allstate Insurance Company. Now, I know when you hear insurance, you might think that we're trying to sell you a new policy, but contrary to what my parents believe and Janie's as well, that's not our goal. Right. So, um, so I'm sure a lot of you in the audience can relate to the difficulties of explaining your data and analytics career to your friends and your family. But thanks to you guys all being here today and Tableau live stream, we'll be able to finally have a holiday without explaining data and analytics. <laughs> our mission today is to explain to our friends and family what we do within Allstate and to also share with all of you how we at Allstate empower our leaders with the use of natural language generation. So before we get started, we're gonna take a quick walk through our agenda. We'll first talk a little bit about Allstate and analytics and how we're making strides to become an analytic literate enterprise. Then we'll give you some background on some challenges that we've been facing and how we believe that Tableau's extensions API coupled with natural language generation can help us overcome those. And finally, we'll demonstrate how we partnered with natural language generation solution vendor Automated Insights to create a proof of concept that delivers valuable analytic insights to all of our users directly within our dashboard. For those of you in the audience who are familiar with Allstate, hang tight for a second. For those of you who are not, we were founded in 1931 and have since grown to a Fortune 100 company. We are the largest publicly held personal lines insurer in the United States. We protect over 16 million households throughout the United States and offer products from home and auto insurance to life, renters, and boat. And based on that statistic, we have some customers with us in the crowd today. We'd like to take a second to thank you for being loyal to Allstate. Our offices are home to over 70,000 professionals worldwide, all working to help our customers protect what they have today and be better prepared for tomorrow. And finally, with over 10,000 agents nationwide, you can definitely find one in your neighborhood. Our agents take pride in creating a local presence and being a force for good within their community. You know with Allstate that you'll be in good hands. Great. So since our founding, we at Allstate pride ourselves on always putting our customers first. As the insurance industry evolved and advanced, Allstate understood the need to stay on top of these emerging trends and new technologies in order to maintain our competitive edge and to best serve our customers. Recognizing the value that data and analytics could bring to us, to an organization of our side, yeah, woo, insurance, very exciting stuff. <laughs> um, 
what have we started? Okay. <laughs> um, so recognizing the value that data and analytics could bring to an organization of our size, Allstate invested in a centralized analytics department known as D3, or our Data Discovery and Decision Science Group. Now D3 is located across seven locations, and as you can see, we have over 300 data and analytics experts working in a variety of business roles. We have offices located in our international locations, such as Bangalore, India, and Belfast, Northern Ireland, as well as on both coasts of the US, and our home office in Northbrook, Illinois. Now D3 is made up of a, a variety of roles. We have traditional data science roles like data scientists and analytic product owners, as well as data engineers, and our role as business analytics consultants, or as we call ourselves, BACs. So as BACs, it's our job to function as a conduit and filter of information between our technical analytics teams and the various business partner teams that we serve. Tableau is a powerful tool for us as business analytics consultants as it provides us an opportunity to share data and insights with a wide ranging audience regardless of their location. Later on in this presentation, Alyssa will highlight our agency quotes dashboard, which is just one example of a deliverable that a BAC can create and provide value to our business teams. Now, as a department, D3 is driving towards a day where data and analytics is embedded in everything we do at Allstate. We strive to achieve this by partnering with a variety of business units and supporting them through their analytic journeys and endeavors. Now, being an insurance company as large as we are, as you can imagine, we have dedicated analytic teams for pretty much all of the major insurance functions from claims to pricing to our sales organization, which is going to be the group that we highlight in our presentation for you guys today. Thanks. So as we mentioned earlier, we're really trying to stay on the cutting edge of analytics and do everything that we can do to stay competitive in today's industry. In order to stay competitive, we need to cultivate these three foundational capabilities, technology, data and analytics, people and culture. To date, Allstate has been very successful in creating a sustainable technology infrastructure and strategic data assets. We are now in a great position to shift our focus to creating an enterprise-wide analytic culture. Our goal is that each employee feels empowered to make data-driven decisions. Now, we all know that change management is no easy task, especially at an enterprise level. So in order to be successful in our goal, we will need to get buy-in from leadership across the organization and cultivate that change. We believe that D3 is well positioned to help aid our business partners through their analytic journey. So it's not hard to imagine being an insurance company of our size that Allstate collects a ton of sales data, which is just ripe for analytics. Part of our jobs as BACs is to partner and support our business partners as they drive towards making data-driven decisions in their everyday activities. We collaborate closely with our sales organization to support them in their analytic endeavor and to provide some more context on what exactly the support entails, let's take a closer look at our sales organization itself. Now, FYI, Allstate uses a lot of acronyms and TBH, it can be kind of hard to keep track of all of them. I know we forget them often, but it's MBD. We'll break them down for you throughout the presentation. So returning to our sales organization, we break the country up into 14 regional markets. Nestled within these regions, we have over 40 territory sales leaders, or TSLs, who manage large areas like an entire state. Now, our territory sales leaders have a wide variety of responsibilities and competing priorities. Given their role in the organization, we count on our territory sales leaders to benchmark metrics and success in their assigned area. Our territory sales leaders report up through our executive corporate leadership, so they also provide important insight to help inform regional sales strategies and different tactics. Our territory sales leaders are also our first line of communication from our home office in Northbrook, Illinois, out to the field offices, which is pretty much any location that's not Northbrook, Illinois. And they help us to impact change and drive change management across all of these locations. Now, another leader type we have is our 
field sales leader or our FSLs. Now, field sales leaders partner a little bit more closely with our agencies themselves, and they work to consult and inform a lot of different things for our agencies. We look to our field sales leaders to help consult and inform on our agency's individual performance, their sales tactics, and their regional trends for a specific agency. Our field sales leaders are also key to communicating back to home office information from the field because they really are that consultation layer between our corporate leadership and our agencies. Allstate has over 250 FSLs partnering with our agents to help them be as successful as possible. And finally, to the largest and the most familiar group of our sales organization are Allstate agents. Now, as Alyssa had mentioned earlier, Allstate has over 10,000 agents located throughout the country, and definitely you can find one in your neighborhood. Our Allstate agents are always working hard to help protect what our customers have today and better plan and prepare for tomorrow. Allstate agents are a great resource for our customers because they're able to provide guided in advice on how to achieve just that. Now, located in our home office in Northbrook, Illinois, working to support all of these leaders, you have one analyst, or in this case, the two of us, working to provide metrics and sales information for all of these different leaders. Now, I'm sure many of you in the audience can relate to this scenario of one analyst to many users. Given the sheer scope of data, the volume of insights, and the number of end users in the scenario, this naturally provides a challenge for us as analysts when it comes to supporting the individual users of our dashboards and Tableau products that we're pushing out to the field. Great. So a little bit earlier, Janie mentioned that we'll walk you through a product that we bring to our sales organization. So as Janie mentioned, the one user, or one analyst to many users is nothing new. Tableau has been helping us to solve for that imbalance by giving us the ability to create customizable dashboards. D3, in fact, has provided a product called the Agency Quotes Dashboard to our sales organization for many years. This dashboard allows leaders to measure the success within their teams and also compare their teams to those in their market. We found that when we weren't seeing the rate of adoption that we wanted, it wasn't that they didn't have access to the metrics or the data available, but they didn't know what to do with the plethora of information in the dashboard. So we found kind of four major problems that we want to walk you through today. The first is that quoting new and returning customers is an integral part of Allstate's success and the core function of our sales team. But any leader having to keep track of metrics for over 1,000 agents can naturally be, naturally be hard for anyone, resulting in data overload. While we talk about providing an analytic enterprise for Allstate, we know that we're not there yet. We still have strides we need to make. Our field organization is made up of leaders that come from various backgrounds and have varying levels of knowledge when it comes to analytics. Therefore, we saw a lot of various interpretations within the data that we provided, and not all of them were getting the best use case out of it. Third, we know that with a lot of valuable insights, data comes a lot of valuable insights. We want to make sure that, like we said, the data that's being provided is the best data, and that they can take that, turn around, make an actionable insight, and help the sales organization because the more successful our sales leaders are, the better equipped they are to serve our customer base. And finally, time. Janie went through all the responsibilities that our territory and field sales leaders have throughout a week. We wanna make sure that no matter how insightful a dashboard is, that we can have a field lead sales leader who loves to go in and drill down into the dashboard and see exactly what they want but also to speak to the, to the consumers who go on, would like to take a 30 second look at it and know exactly what they need to do with their sales leader that week. So overall, two overarching themes are time and various levels of expertise. After uncovering these gaps, we recognize the need to be able to provide valuable insights quickly and directly within the dashboard. 
Thanks to Tableau's extensions API and the power of natural language generation, we set out to create a proof of concept. So as Alyssa mentioned, thanks to Tableau's timely release of the extensions API, we were able to partner with our good friends at Automated Insights to implement their natural language generation solution, Wordsmith application. Now, before we get into our proof of concept and demonstrate exactly how this partnership works together, let's take a look at natural language generation itself and get a better understanding for what exactly this technique is. Now, some of you may be familiar with natural language processing. The functions of natural language generation are actually rooted in natural language processing or NLP. I promise that would come through with the acronyms. So, Natural language processing is a brand, popular branch of machine learning concerned with the relationships between computers and natural human language. NLP may seem a little far-fetched or off into the future thanks to all those sci-fi movies where robots are taking over the world, but natural language processing is actually already all around us today. You can see everyday examples like the autocorrect feature on your cell phone to everyone's virtual best friend, Siri or Alexa. There are also a lot of great business applications for this technology, including text parsing for um, sentiment analysis, as well as topic modeling for free form text. Now, oftentimes when we think of natural language processing, we think of taking data such as voice or text data and turning it into a structured useful format. The process of actually taking this unstructured data and turning it into a useful output while retaining that natural human context is actually known as NLU or natural language understanding. On the other hand, the solution that we've selected for our particular dashboard is natural language generation, which you can think of as the process of taking the data that's already in a structured format and turning it into natural human language within the context of our dashboards. Thanks to T Tableau's extensions API, we were able to further explore natural language generation solutions and see how they would benefit our particular use case. We'll demo in a little bit about our work done with Automated Insights and the Wordsmith application, and our hope is that by implementing the Wordsmith application and natural language generation narratives directly in our dashboard, we'll have better empowered end users who are able to take all of the rich data and insights that currently exist in our Tableau dashboard and actually read them and utilize them to help make data-driven decisions in their everyday lives. Great. So now that we're all data science experts, let's put it all together and go ahead and fill in the gaps. I'm sure many of you in the audience can relate to our first iteration of building out our agency quotes dashboard. We had a lot of historical sales data. We consulted with some of our leaders out in the field and some of our leaders in our analytics department to get a better understanding of what are the most valuable insights and the KPIs that we want to pull out from all of this data. Understanding this, we built out a Tableau dashboard, actually 14 Tableau dashboards, um, one for each of our regional markets, and distributed this out to the field. Now, our expectation in home office was that all of our leaders out in the field would be engaged and, and excited to have this data at their fingertips. Instead, as Alyssa had covered earlier, we actually ended up with a few power users and a majority of users who were just not using the dashboard to its full capability. Now, taking a step back and taking into consideration the feedback we had received, or I guess I should say the lack of feedback and lack of engagement that we received, we decided to look and set out for a new solution to better reach our audience. For our second iteration, which is what we're going to share with you guys today, our POC, we took that same structured data with all of our sales information and this time we implemented Automated Insights Wordsmith application directly into our existing dashboard. We were able to push out, we were able to push together the narratives and our dashboards into one powerful tool so that anyone out in the field would be able to access all of this information at once. Now our hope is that by combining the power of Automated Insights Wordsmith application and their narrative analysis directly with all of the data that already exists in our Tableau dashboard, we're able to have a higher rate of adoption and at the end of the day, we're able to have more engaged 
happier end users who are actually using this data and feel empowered to make decisions based off the information that's existing in the dashboard. Great. So who's ready to see it in action? Okay, but unfortunately, first, we're going to put you through Insurance 101. <laughs> so in order to fully understand what we're about to show you, we want to give you a little bit of background on these three key terms. The first is bind. So if you go into your Allstate agent, get a quote, and choose to become an Allstate customer, you would have bound your policy and then had protection from Allstate. Great. The next term we're gonna go over is close rate. This one requires a little bit of math, but don't worry, I'm not gonna, you don't have to whip out your calculators. I'm not gonna make you do any of the calculations yourselves. We're gonna cover a close rate. A close rate is when a quote that has been bound is the, uh, sorry, a close rate is calculated by taking the number of quotes that have been bound, or as Alyssa explained, that have been purchased and turned into a policy over the total number of quotes produced by an agency. Now, in the demo, you'll see that we have our close rate reported at an agency level, as well as aggregate groups of agents when we're talking at different leader levels. And finally, a requote. Now, a requote is when a customer who has previously come into Allstate received a quote, and for whatever reason, they chose to not bind with Allstate or purchase a policy, comes back at a later date and requests a new quote. So those are our three key terms that you'll have to keep in mind as we go through our dashboard. Hopefully not too painful, Insurance 101. It's exciting stuff. Y'all passed. Yeah, everyone passes. We're not gonna test you. <laughs> Okay, great, so now we will switch into our demo and share all of this exciting work in action. Awesome, and there it is. So just as a disclaimer to make everyone back at home office happy, we wanna remind you that this is a mock dashboard with an itemized dummy data um, for the sole purposes of this presentation. As we mentioned before, Agency Quotes Dashboard, or AQD, is distributed to our field sales organization to help benchmark teams against others and make sure that they're striving towards the success that they have planned. This dashboard gives the capability to filter based on individual user and gives them metrics directly related to that user and their team. And finally, this dashboard allows users to steer their teams towards success and again, be the best providers for our customers. So if you look at the dashboard up on the screen, you can see that there are insights on the left-hand side. That's available to us thanks to Tableau's extensions API connecting with WordSmith application from Automated Insights. The insights are pulled directly from data within the dashboard and update in real time. This allows our users to identify trends and problem areas and quickly couple them with action items to take away and continue on with their afternoon. So when we have the dashboard set to an entire region, this first or the second insight shows that five FSLs or field sales leaders have seen their close rates fall by more than half a percentage point compared to this time last year. It follows up with an action for them to take, to reach out to their team and see how you can help provide support. While half a percent might not seem significant, we wanna make sure that our field sales leaders are on the top of their game and providing the best support and being the best asset to everyone on their team. So now let's go over and drill in to Brian Hemmings, which is a territory sales leader within our organization. When we switch to Brian, you see that the, uh, the insights on the left-hand side automatically update. When we originally look at the graph, you can see that there's a gap between Brian's team's close rate and the statewide close rate. And when you look at the insights on the left-hand side, it confirms exactly what we're seeing. Brian's team is currently exceeding this year's regional close rate by 4.3 percentage points. Great job driving results. This is an awesome statistic for Brian to take back to his senior leadership and show them that the value that his team is bringing and the success that they're having this year. When we go down to the next insight, we see that Tracy and Lisa have also seen their close rates fall by more than half a percent year over year. If we go back over to the sub-sales leader, we can drill down to Lisa and see how, she's, how we can provide help to her. 
We could click on Lisa and wait for the uh, narrative to update. Now as a leader, we know that Lisa has been historically a high performer. And we can see that that's still true because she's exceeding this year's reason, regional close rate by 2.8 percentage points. If we look at the next insight, we see that her close rate has still fallen by more than half a percent this year. This is a great opportunity for Brian to go talk to Lisa, who is a uh, field sales leader under him, and talk about, reassure her that she's doing a great job, congratulate her and her team on success, but to also talk about what's different from last year, how can, she, how can he help her improve and get back to where we expect her to be or have seen her in the past. When we close out of Lisa and go back to Brian, we can look at the third insight that says your close rate is lower when discounts are offered, but your team is doing a great job at offering discounts. While it seems a little contradictive, we realize that that might be the way that they're presenting discounts to our customers. We want to make sure that we're giving our customers the best rate possible, giving them introduction to every discount they're applicable for, but also making sure that we really close their rate, close their policy, and have them become Allstate customers. I'm now going to turn it over to Janie to take it a step down and take a look at the field sales leaders. Thanks, Alyssa, for taking us through that view of the dashboard at the territory sales leader level. If you recall from earlier when we were discussing the role, I'm sure a leader at that level would love to see narrative insights rather than digging through the dashboard and finding those insights for themselves. Now, let's take on the role of a field sales leader. If you'll recall from earlier, a field sales leader consults closely with our agents, so a lot of the types of metrics that they're looking at are based off individual agencies and the types of activities that they can do to directly impact change within an agency. Let's take on the role of Anthony Ellison. So for all intents and purposes, I will be Anthony for this demo. And when the insights load, again, in real time, Anthony is immediately drawn to the fact that the number of quotes and close rate in his with the agents in his group have both fallen from this time last year. Given this insight, Anthony definitely wants to see what he can do to make impactful change with his agents, so he turns his attention to the second insight. Reading further along, Anthony sees that his top three agents, Wendy, Joanne, and Robert, have accounted for nearly 3,000 of the closed deals in his area and have a combined close rate of 66%. Now, as a field sales leader who's familiar with the market trends and metrics, Anthony is proud and confident of his agents and happy that they're performing at such a high level. Again, given the metric at the top of the dashboard, he wants to see where he can make change and impact some of the results with his agents. So he continues to read down to the insights and sees that his bottom three agents, Dominic, Angela, and Dorothy, have a combined close rate of just 8% and are closing roughly 1,000 deals. Given this insight, Anthony decides he wants to drill in deeper at the agency level to get a better understanding of what's going on with his bottom three performing agents and again, what he can do as a field sales leader to help consult and inform those three agents. So drilling down into those three specific agents, Anthony sees that while the quote count has increased over the past year for these particular agents, their close rate has fallen by a significant amount. Given this metric, Anthony's better informed when he goes to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with these agents about the types of things that he can help improve in their spaces. Different strategies like consulting on sales talk paths, issuing more policies that are bundled together, or applying more applicable discounts are all things that Anthony can do when he's talking with his agents to help them take these quotes into closed deals. And at that point, he'll help improve their overall close rate. Now that Anthony has noted that action item as a to-do for himself, he returns to the larger view of his team to see what other insights are available for him to glean. Turning our attention to the final insight at the field level, Anthony sees that eight out of 40 agents in his area are exceeding the average, average agent requote by more than 50%. Now, if you'll recall, recall from the uh, fun time that we spent together in Insurance 101, 
A requote is when a customer or a consumer who has previously quoted with Allstate and did not purchase a policy returns to Allstate, makes the right choice, and decides to ask for a new quote. Given this metric, Anthony sees that he has eight agents that are doing a great job of gaining new customers and growing their customer base. A great recommendation built directly into the dashboard for Anthony is to schedule one-on-one -on -one time with these eight overperforming agents to get a better understanding of what exactly it is that they're doing during the requote process. During these conversations, Anthony will be able to understand maybe some of the talk paths and best practices that he would then be able to share with the larger group during a weekly sales call or maybe during his other one-on-ones with different agents. And again, this will overall improve the sales rate at his particular level, and as well as better equip our agents to serve their customers. Now, as you can see, we're easily able to derive many insights from this single dashboard in real time. This is one dashboard in a 10-sheet workbook and as I mentioned earlier, we have 14 of these workbooks out in production, one for each of our regional markets. Imagine how powerful this solution would be at scale if we were able to implement natural language solution into every single one of our dashboards and provide this information to all of our different leaders. The key advantage of utilizing this Wordsmith application directly in our Tableau dashboard is that we're able to provide the right leader with the right data and insights in real time so that they're able to take action and make a positive change in their group. Now we're going to return to our presentation and we'll talk through some of the key learnings that we had while we were going through this whole process. Um, Alyssa and I definitely learned a lot while we were going through this POC, and we would definitely want to share that information with all of you in case there's anyone in the audience that is very excited or as excited as we are about natural language generation. These are some of the key takeaways that are kind of um, great insights to have as you continue your, your analytics journey. So the first thing is empowering users with actionable insights. As we had mentioned throughout the presentation, we wanted to empower our leaders and our different, um, or the different teams across the organization to lead from every seat and make data-driven decisions with actual data from our dashboards rather than relying on an analyst to maybe help them figure out what the dashboard is telling them or even worse, just going off of a hunch. By putting the narrative insight directly into our dashboard, we're really creating citizen data analysts throughout our organization and empowering them to take this information into their own hands. Second, we were able to ease, or we're hoping to be able to ease adoption of analytics for some of those users who maybe lack the expertise or simply don't have the time to sift through a dashboard and glean these insights for themselves. And third, the Extensions API made this extremely easy for us to plug in a Wordsmith application into our existing dashboard. Rather than starting from scratch or providing static narrative insights in something like an email, weekly email push, we're able to put this application into our dashboard and provide customized real-time insights for any user across any location in any role. Tableau's Extensions API, partnered with Automated Insights Wordsmith application, has allowed us the ability to elevate our users' experience. The developer now has the ability to make the insight exactly what they want it to be and deliver a clear, consistent message to every end user. And finally, as we mentioned before, we have people using these dashboards who come from data-driven backgrounds and also those who are really not familiar with data and analytics. This solution helps us to eliminate room for misinterpretation and any of the gray area that can be found within the dashboards. So before we wrap up and take questions today, we want to thank you guys again for joining us and helping explain to our parents what we do. Great. So as Alyssa mentioned, thanks so much for joining us today. For those of you who do have questions and want to stick around, we'll be here hanging out. Our partners from Automated Insights will be here. If you have very technical developer questions, we'll probably uh, direct you over to that smart team and they can answer some of that stuff. Otherwise, um, feel free to head out. I know it's quite traffic, uh, some traffic jams throughout the conference. So if you have another session you want to get to, 
please feel free. Otherwise, we're open for NLQ, and I'm sure many of you have guessed it at this point, natural language question and answer. Again, thank you for joining us today, and have a great rest of your conference. Also, for those of you who, uh, oh yeah. We can take your question or if you want to come up here. All right, thank you. Um, I want to ask a question. So first off, really good stuff. I like the, the text, the automated text uh, insights. How do you account for a rep having like an outlier week? So maybe they took the day off or something and you're comparing like weekly results. Yeah, the great thing about, oh, is the mic on? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, awesome. Yeah, I can hear you. Wow, you guys are so on top of things back there. <laughs> Um, the great thing about the agency quotes dashboard that we have particularly built out is that it provides a historical view. So as a leader, you're able to drill down into a specific agent level as well as look at different time periods for that agent. Now, if you do see an outlier week, that totally is something that could happen. I, told, I get where the question is coming from, but I think that our general understanding of the way that the field leaders work is that they consult so closely with their teams that they kind of know what to expect, and the dashboard is more confirming and um, providing proof of the things that they already know are happening in their agencies. Cool, and just one more follow-up. Do you have any like, incentive programs that happen so if a rep overperforms, maybe it triggers an automatic recognition award or anything like that? Yeah, um, we're not as familiar with all the recognitions within the field, but I do know they have a program called the Masters, which really recognizes all of our field sales leaders and regional sales leaders throughout the year. So definitely these metrics get reported back up to senior leadership and are used to help recognize those who are performing great. Cool, thank you. Absolutely, thank you for your question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you mentioned you, had, you guys had, I think, 14 different dashboards because of the regions. Mm -hmm. Was there any um, desire to just go to one or what, why 14 uh, different yeah. ones? Yeah, so as we mentioned, this is one sheet out of 10 worksheets that build up the dashboard. Some of the sheets that we didn't share are very uh, region-centric, like maps and things like that, that are just a little bit more one, easier to deploy into the server if you're kind of focusing the narrow of the scope. Also, the amount of data that's within these, it just is a little bit easier to break it out into regions and have it delivered directly to those leaders. Yeah, and we have dedicated offices within each of our regions so that they know when they log onto the server, they have everything within their office contained in one workbook. Thank you. Can you talk a little bit about your process for choosing which metrics went into the narrative versus just metrics in a dashboard just on the graphs? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that, as Janie mentioned, we have a lot more worksheets. And so the ones that are highlighted on here is more so what we built this particular page to be. So when we go through and want to know exactly what they're looking at, an end user, we took the view of you have 30 seconds, what's the most important things that we want to tell you? So if we had the full dashboard with us, we'd be able to show you on different pages, different insights highlight different recommendations um, and have the ability for that leader to go in and see exactly what they're looking for at that moment. Sorry, just one follow up. That's so fine. did you go through with like the sales leaders and figure out which were the top metrics that they really cared about to show in the narrative or? Yeah, so. Work? As Alyssa had mentioned, the Agency Codes dashboard has actually been in production at Allstate for, I want to say, like six years now, longer than I've been there. So um, the first iteration, we definitely were able to gather feedback and elicit information from our leaders on the types of things that are impactful and helpful for them to see. There are also some things that having a dedicated analytics team that we kind of want to drive them to see. So maybe things that are more around trends and taking a larger strategic view of the data within their dashboard are some of the things that we're kind of popping in there to help th drive them towards using analytics to make decisions further out. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Great presentation and a follow-up to this question about which metrics. My question is really about which narratives. Um, so a little more if you could, maybe a two-part question. One is how do you decide if it's top three agents they want to see listed or top, you know, bottom three agents? 
And then the second part is there's a bit of repeti repetitive narrative like, great job, Johnny, great job, Susie, and that might start to lose value over time. Is it your customers that say that they want to see that verbiage on top of, you know, because it seems like it's uh, maybe marginal value add uh, over time. At first, it'd be very good, but then after a while. So interested to hear how your customers had input into that. I can take the first one. Um, so while building this, we really wanted to make sure that we kind of stuck to that 30 second rule. So while we could go in and say all their performers or none of their performers, we kind of started thinking that three was an optimal number to be able to go in, make change, but also um, stick to that if you don't have all day to be on it. And we're really, being able to put this on the side of our dashboard doesn't take away the ability for the leader to go in and drill down and see every, um, every one of their leaders below them. So we really want the opportunity that they can highlight three, but you know, if you still see a person that you're surprised isn't in the top three or you're surprised they weren't in the top, or are in the top three, you can go in and make sure where they're at, how they've improved, and still check on those metrics. And that's the beauty of being able to still have this in a dynamic dashboard. Yeah. And then in terms of the narrative that you're seeing and how much, I would say, content creative control you have over it, Automated Insights can provide more detail on that, but honestly, we went full blown, like we did every wording and um, wordsmithing of what was written there. And as a user and as a developer, you totally have that freedom and flexibility to write the narratives that you want. At Allstate, we're very um, complimentary. We don't say, this is what you're doing bad. We say, this is your opportunity area. So a lot of the verbiage that you see is very true to Allstate. Um, so things that are like calling out your top performers, praising them, scheduling time to shout out the people that are doing a great job in their areas. It's just very true to our corporate culture, but as a user, you'd be able to take whatever data is in your dashboard and write a narrative that fits your story as well as your data and the end user that you're shipping this out to. Yeah, and I think that speaks to over time, the improvements we'll make to the narrative feedback we get as it rolls out and becomes more adopted. Thank you. Okay, so I have uh, two questions, if you'll permit me. Yeah. Um, so first, have you gotten any feedback so far on like if this is actually helping with adoption or engagement in your dashboards? Um, and then the second one, from your point of view as the analyst constructing the narrative, how quickly were you able to pick it up, and what's the, you know, how much time does it take for you to actually construct those narratives, right? Yeah. So to talk a little bit about your first question, we have not yet rolled this out to our agents nationwide, so we haven't had the opportunity to have that feedback. Um, but we are pretty positive in, in rolling this out, that having the narrative and really going to both sides of the analytic knowledge and being on that full spectrum that will have great adoption. And through that, as we mentioned to the prior question, we have the ability to go in, revise the narratives, make sure it's saying exactly what they want to hear, and that it truly is, at the end of the day, raising performance. Yeah, also, um, this isn't the only use case for natural language generation in a dashboard, right? I'm sure sitting in the audience, you could think of 100 things you could do with this. At Allstate itself, this is one POC that we have in flight, but there's also work going on in our claims group and our customer experience group where we are receiving that positive feedback, like, hey, these narratives are saving me as a leader hours of time that I could be spending digging through a dashboard, which as a leader I'm never gonna do, but instead I'm having these narratives directly sent to me, that's providing impactful change and I'm actually using the data that you're sending out. So. While this specific one has not been rolled out to the field, we are using automated insights at Allstate and we are seeing positive change from that. Sorry, you had a second point to your question. I think I forgot. Uh, yeah, so just uh, from your point of view, so you're creating the narrative. Oh, yeah, you're, yeah. You're doing that. How difficult is it to actually pick up and use? Because just so to give you some background, like I've sort of talked to automated insights a little bit. So I, I, I was wondering from your point of view, like how difficult was it to pick up? What's the learning curve? Um, 
Yeah, how, I would how say. How long does it take to construct these narratives? I would say if you can do calculations in Tableau, you can build a narrative insight into your dashboard. It's really the same formula, and I guess as long as you're not super picky about the wordsmithing of it, which Alyssa and I were, so we went back and forth a lot. Granted, we were presenting at this session, so maybe if this was going uh, just internally, we would be a little more lax with the type of wording that we were using, and maybe a little bit more direct. But you have complete, if you can do calculations, you have complete creative control, and it's really easy to implement as an analyst or a developer yourself. I would say the majority of the time we spent on this was just wordsmithing, taking a lot of time to say, is that the way we want to say it, or is that the best way to explain to our leader? So definitely not a difficult thing to implement, but you get a really high impact and a really high value at the end. Thank you. So you mentioned a lot about um, the process involved in setting the insights. How much control did the TSLs or the FSLs have in saying these are the insights that I want my teams to have in the call out box? So like if there's different initiatives going on or different situations in a specific agency versus a different agency, how much control did the FSLs, TSLs in, have in saying this is what I want my team's narratives to look like? Yeah. So the way it's built out now is that the entire region will get similar narrative. It will just be based on their own metrics. So at that level, there's not a difference between an agent in one location versus an agent in another location being able to see that. But the ability to give that feedback to us and go in and be able to add insights, make sure that we're making it exactly what they want it to be, we have complete control over. And did you see any pushback from the TSLs or FSL saying, I want to have more control of what my teams are seeing? We have not. Um, we have not rolled this out fully yet, but we also don't expect to see that. Um, based on what they've had before with just being a dashboard, they didn't really have that freedom either. So being able to add this is a step above and will already be better than what they had prior. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks again. Really great presentation. Enjoyed what I saw, so I appreciate you taking the time and putting that together. Um, what, I, what I'm interested in, and it might be a little bit premature, but your adoption rate didn't sound like you're, you're fully there yet. But I'm wondering, I know I'm dealing with, an, with a group of technicians that are using dashboards, that it's not always intuitive for them to know, oh, click here, click there. Did you give any thought into instruction-based narrative language into your actual tool itself? And if you did, what made you kind of stray away from that? By which I kind of mean, hey, your, your top three people are doing really well. Here's, click on these three buttons to see what's driving their performance. That type of instruction-based language. Yeah, absolutely. That is actually a really great point. We have not um, kind of looked into that before. But every time we roll out a new product at Allstate, especially out to our field, we make sure that we provide education, provide resources for them to go back and look through if they have any questions. Um, but I think that would be a great idea to be able to marry kind of that guide, how-to guide into something like this where the insights are provided directly within the dashboard. Yeah, I think the place that we are in our adoption rate is that we're just trying to get people to click and read it before we're trying to tell them where to click further. So that's definitely, I would say, maybe like phase two of us getting people to use the narratives, use the dashboard. But the level of engagement we were getting with the initial rollout of the Agency Codes dashboard, I mean, you can, you can see how many people are using your dashboard or if it was down and we weren't getting emails like, hey, why is this dashboard down? It kind of gives you a feel for how little people are interacting with the dashboard. So just being able to provide the highest level of narrative insight and giving people the freedom to dig further, because we do have power users that are drilling down, taking the data into their own hands. I think I would love to be at a place where we're, people are asking us for like, hey, what do I do next? Like you gave me these insights, but what, what's next? Hope we'll keep our fingers crossed that once we roll this out fully, we get to that place. Okay, I think you'll get that soon based on. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence. Great job, you know, but yeah. So. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, how do you manage the security of basically having all of this data uh, given to all of those, uh, basically all of those uh, uh, leader of the, of those teams, uh, since they are able to see the result of their peers? 
um, do you do you separate it? Like, do you use a security to avoid having a, a manager see the result of another manager, or do you let them have the opportunity of comparing themselves between each other and uh, within within this? Yeah, so this only goes down to a field sales leader. So while it has success metrics for all of the agents, our agents aren't able to actually see this dashboard. And that's because all of our agents are independent owners. And so we cannot share each other's one's data with another. Um, so up at the field sales leader and the territory sales leader, we definitely have the ability to see other people's data. Um, but we haven't had any issues with that. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So that, that's why you use uh, you use many dashboard that uh, li like you mentioned you have like uh, it, is it the same version of this dashboard that you have uh, oh. customized for different teams mm -hmm. for the different regions yeah so with for different regional markets it's the same type of metrics that they're seeing but because our regions report up through executive leadership at the regional level it's not necessarily. Honestly, I would be surprised if any field or territory sales leader is going in and checking up on other groups performance metrics because the problem we're having right now is that they're not even looking at their own. But um, they do have the ability to do that given this current dashboard because you can filter and select. It's not like set up with permissions that as Anthony Ellison, I can only look at Anthony Ellison's data. It's definitely not set up in that way just because we're pretty transparent with the information that's out there and they all do report up through the same um, regional leadership. Thank Maybe that would be kind of a fun competitive edge if someone's actually out there poking around in other people's data. I would be very surprised to see that, though. Yeah. It's, it's just the, 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 the maintenance of having so many reports, basically, which are very extremely similar. And all of those reports, they, they have to be maintained uh, after throughout those different teams. Yeah, so the, the regional um, leaders, like the territory sales leaders and field sales leaders, field sales leaders can only ac access the dashboard for their areas, but there are 14 dashboards that exist throughout the country. Yeah, that is true, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Hi, uh, I got a question is that, um, I was wondering how do you guys uh, train the model and how do you guys come up with the narrative or you guys like have a template to write it down or like, you know, have some, some, some AI that really behind it to generate it or like how many effort that you put in to, to train it and then to this level? Yeah, so we write our narratives basically within a Word document and then are able to put them in. To speak a little bit more to the, the technical part behind that, um, we're happy to, to hand you over to any one of our partners from Automated Insights in the first three rows right there. Um, and they'd be happy to walk you through a little bit more on, on the back end model building side of that. I would say that the majority of the work is to build a framework for the narrative inside itself, and then the data just updates in real time. So the things that you're seeing that are dynamically able to change, like the trends or the call-outs on close rate and amount of deals and things like that, that stuff is just automatedly, automatedly, automatically, wow, <laughs> automatically updated um, when your data is fed into the dashboard. But the structure of the narrative itself, that's kind of an initial framework that we set up, and then we just let the data do the work, and it feeds into the narrative, and it provides the actual metrics and callouts of the things that you're seeing. Does that answer your question? Yes, and how many, like, a uh, template or something that you guys, like, put together for that, or? Yeah, so for this dashboard, we did, I would say, like six or seven different views and we highlighted a few of them here. That was probably on our end with the wordsmithing and stuff like that, maybe a few weeks of work. And I'll let Andrea or our automated insights team speak to how long it actually took them to plug it in. Um, but creating the framework of the narrative that we wanted to share was, I would say maybe the two of us doing it together a week and then a few weeks of going back and forth, tweaking, wordsmithing, making everything friendly for corporate relations and our legal team, yeah. and then sharing it. <laughs> Yeah, and it has the awesome ability to, once you create the framework, if it's put into your dashboard and it's not highlighting it the right way, you, it just doesn't give you the feeling you were expected, we have the ability to go in and highlight, bold, italicize, change phrasings a little bit, and that all takes a lot less time. So it's really getting the framework, having the idea of what you want to say, build it in, and then just short little tweaks in between then. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
I'm Jackie Minogue. I work at uh, Baxter Healthcare, so just down the street from where you are. Uh, I just, it's not a question, just a comment. Uh, a thank you to you guys for uh, not only your presentation today, but also hosting a lot of our Tableau user groups at your facility. So we've, <laughs> we've been able to leverage some of your ideas. We've actually just recently had a demo from uh, Automated Insights as well. So just really happy to see this working. Thank you. Cool, Great. awesome. Thank you. Also, we should shout out our Tableau COE is actually in the room. Oh, Yenny, I see. Yep. She's right up here if you want to thank her in person. Yeah, she does <laughs> a lot of that work. <laughs> Definitely can't take the credit for that stuff. Okay, cool. Well, again, thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference. Yeah.